Welcome to Now in Android, episode 42. Summertime is here and I hope you can take breaks to enjoy what you love most. Things don't stop in Android development, and here is a list of new things that came out after the previous episode. Starting in August 2021, in one month, Google Play will start requiring new apps to be published with the Android App Bundle. This will replace the APK as the standard publishing format. If you haven't made the switch to app bundles yet, consider doing so. There is a blog post in Android Developer's Google blog that explains the benefits for both developers and users. The Navigation Math Skill series has come to an end with a live stream Q&A episode. Thanks for all the questions and navigate over to the recording to see what happened. As usual, there is a wrap-up blog post for the series with all of the links to the episode videos and articles. We've had some Android X releases happening during this time as well. A new library in Alpha is Core-SplashScreen that provides backwards compatibility for the SplashScreen APIs in Android 12. The APIs are backported down to API 23. Jetpack Compose and Data Store have now reached release candidate status, meaning the 1.0 stable releases are right around the corner. Now that Jetpack Compose is going stable soon, more and more technologies will start adopting it. And that's already the case for Wear OS. Wear Compose is a new library to write apps for wearable devices using Jetpack Compose. It supports Wear material design, and the first alpha version of the library just landed. Read more about what's included in the release notes. A lot of articles were published as well. Isai Damier started a nearby API series. The first part covers the nearby messages API that allows you to send small binary payloads between internet-connected Android and iOS devices. And the second part is about the nearby connections API that allows users to connect with each other even when no internet is available and also allows transferring unlimited amounts of data between devices. Another blog post by Nikki Borelli is Scope Storage Myths. Apps will be required to update their target SDK version to API 30 in the second half of the year. That means your app will be required to go with a scope storage. Nikki busts myths in a Q&A format in this blog post. Okay, what else? Karen Chang wrote a blog post that explains the Work Manager multiprocess APIs added in Work Manager 2.6. And I also wrote a blog post, and this time was about the story of the Repeat on Lifecycle API, how it was designed, and why other APIs were removed from the Lifecycle-Runtime-KDX library to help developers prevent errors. If you're interested in foldable devices, Francesco Romano wrote about a simple and efficient way to adapt your app's layout when it runs on foldable devices. There are also updates in the Android for Cars world. The Android for Cars app library, launched in April, brought navigation, parking, and charging apps to your car. Now, a new version 1.1 is in alpha, with features such as sign-in template, long message template, multiple length text, and map interactivity. Lastly, there are new episodes of the ADV podcast. Episode 168, talks about Compose's support for material design with discussions about how Compose supports material components and material theming out of the box, how you can customize your composables, material view, and more. Episode 169 covers the recent improvements to testing, such as automated test snapshots, the test matrix tool, and the unified Gradle test runner and Gradle managed virtual devices. That's it for this time. For links to everything that I mentioned in this episode, check out the Now in Android episode 42 blog post on Medium. If you want to get notified when we release more Now in Android episodes, please subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube or to the Now in Android podcast in your favorite client app. Bye!